What's going on guys, VVP back with another Game Case Arcades video. This is it, check it out, my virtual pinball machine. So you guys haven't done it yet, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. If you haven't following it, I basically put the whole entire story of basically start to finish, build, cutting the wood, assembling everything, doing a couple of the software stuff. I've put that all in my story and now it's a highlight on my actual Instagram um, page. So be sure to check that out because this again, I'm super proud of it. I built it literally from the ground up. I cut the wood. I did everything myself, which again, it, it sounds weird, but I'm super proud of it. But um, I'll give you a quick rundown as far as the system. Later on in videos, I'm gonna basically try to give a tutorial on how you guys could build this. I am not an electrician. I am not a expert at this. I did some research again, shout out to Mr. Frenchie and Terry Red. Those are the main two videos that I've been watching. Those guys on YouTube, they, they make it easy. Um, a lot of talking, but it's a-okay because you do have to listen and learn everything. I will most likely do tutorials as far as helping you guys wiring solenoids and getting everything set up like my build. Um, all in all, as if you're talking about budgets and again that's how i like to kind of base stuff off and try to help people with is building these things on a budget same thing goes to my arcade cabinets some people laugh at my budget because it's not really budget but compared to what like retail prices are for this it's budget what you see right here soup to nuts everything you see right here i probably spent about twenty two hundred dollars in total it's not really including like labor time I've done it on the side, basically I have a real job, this is all a side gig, I have a real job and then at, the, at night for about two or three hours a night, I'm able to work on the actual pinball machines. I'll do a quick rundown as far as what I have as hardware and all that, um, but as far as toys and as far as my pinball machine, I believe that this is basically 99% of what you would want in an actual virtual pinball cabinet as far as force feedback. I have everything. Solenoids, flashers, the strobes. The only thing I do not have in this pinball cabinet is the shaker motor, the blower fan, and bells and chimes. I, I, I don't want them. I don't really think that they're necessary. A lot of people will kind of doubt me on that quote. Shaker motor apparently is very common. Like I should get a shaker motor. Luckily with the same smart board, I have one opening for a shaker motor. Later on down the line, I'll actually get it. But I'm not doing the blower fan and I didn't do the bells and the chimes because I'm not really going to be playing those old school original pinball tables. I'm going to be playing like, you know, not modern stuff, but stuff that was more than just like, you know, the old school digital um, analog uh, DMDs. Um, so that's what I was basing it off of. And again, my pinball cabinet was based off the Simpsons pinball party. Artwork completely custom by me. I did all the artwork, arcade custom graphics printing it out for me, so shout out to them. It wasn't free, I paid my dues, but they did some quality work, so again, big shout out to them. As far as now, the build itself, we have a 50 inch play field, Samsung 7 series. I bought it at, at Costco for about 350 bucks. It is a regular 50 inch screen. I was gonna go QLED, which um, somebody that I follow on YouTube, Oliver, um, he has a QLED, it looked amazing, but I figured for my first pinball cabinet, I could keep it basic with a TV. Big thing is that you do want to do a 4K display, so this is a 50 inch 4K Samsung. On the back glass here, I got a 32 inch ViewSonic. Um, this one came out to about 200 bucks on Amazon. Big deal about this is that it was frameless, bezel-less. Just the bottom, you have the bezel. On the bottom here, I do have a Spectre 22 inch a 1080p screen, that was cheap. That was about maybe 65, 70 bucks when I got it. So 32 inch, 22 inch, 50 inch. As far as resolutions, you got a 4K play field, 1080p back glass, and 1080p full apron DMD. Again, and later on in the video, I'm gonna go through a couple of breakdowns and all that. I plan to go really in depth to help you guys do it. Again, I was able to do it. I'm very sure you guys could do it too. Plexiglass is what I'm using for the play field and the DMD. There is no glass in front of the back glass. I love how I did it. I basically am using the top of the screen as my basically top board. 
Um, I'll explain later on why I had to do that. You can see Homer and Bart and the beacons are a little bit lower. They're actually about two and a half inches below behind the screen. Um, I was gonna put it up here. It was originally supposed to be a piece of wood here with a T-mold here, but my ceiling height, Homer and Bart wouldn't fit and it would rest right on the beacon. So I had to lower it and all that. But again, I think it looks very cool. I think it's perfect. Again, I said in my, my past videos, I was not a fan of people's builds. And again, that's your build. I wanted to do it different. I wasn't a fan of big gaps, big empty gaps. For example, like this, my speaker panel. Again, you have these gaps here, but I utilize it in my favor. You don't see it in the camera right now, but there is an actual strobe here and an actual um, flasher here. Same thing here, there's a strobe and a flasher. So I didn't want empty, useless space. That's the only space that you see. Same thing for the play field. I didn't want like these big black borders with the letterbox style. I wanted the actual cabinet to fit edge to edge to the TV. Let me bring you in closer. We'll check out a couple of things real quick. So again, as you can see, as far as the play field here, it is literally edge to edge. I bought these um, from Home Depot, the L channel. Big thing was that I didn't, I did want like a mirror style finish. So these were kind of hard to find. This isn't your regular L channel because they made, they make it out of aluminum. Um, this one has a very nice finish to it. I didn't polish it. It came from the store like this. Uh, but again, big things that you as you could see, there is no letterbox. You basically just have the TV frame. So depending on where you're standing, you could slightly see the frame. You could slightly see like the Samsung logo right here. But again, it is edge to edge. The only way I would have hit it, these right here is an inch and a quarter. The next one up would have been like an inch and a half. I didn't want it to come down the sides too much on the side art. So inch and a quarter is what I went with. I don't have a lock bar because again, the width of this cabinet is 25 and a half inches wide. I would have had to go into getting a whole custom lock bar. Again, I wanted to do it on a budget. I didn't even bother. So real quick, I'll show you what I mean as far as what I have going on behind the plexiglass I cut. Uh, speakers I used was a Z515 or 513 from Logitech. I actually used the original housing. I took the back out. I brought the speaker back a little bit, which I'll show you later on in the video. And I put my own LED strips in it. That's all being controlled by the LED whiz in the cabinet. Um, I'll show you real quick what I mean. You will see basically when I insert a coin, I have strobes that go off. So there's strobes here. And then during gameplay, is the flashers, RGB flashers. I'm gonna do a separate video explaining what I did with my flashers because people are gonna get confused right now. But basically I have the red R and then I have the B in the flashers. So again, flashers are RGB, it's three channels. If you think of it like that, I basically used automotive strobe lights and my um, flashers are just red and blue strobe lights. So I have this link to the R channel for flasher and this one linked to the B channel for Flasher. Just got to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown on how I did it. So now real quick, I'll do like a quick 45 second play. Um, I have basically the volume knob for the to Logitech right in the front. This way I could basically control the volume. 10 solenoids. Live plunger. There you have it. I'll bring you in closer for one more quick playthrough so you could see how the... I'll bring you guys in closer so you can kind of at least see 
maybe first person view while you actually play. I kind of want to get the DMD in it while we play it uh, real quick, just to show you the analog plunger. So I let it go too early. There we go. So I'll restart. toys and all the features I have in this. Uh, this is basically just using uh, three main components. One is an LED width, which is a 32 port um, USB device. The other one is a 16 channel Sane Smart. And the last one is the KLZ25 encoder for the buttons. So right now, as you can see, we are in like a track mode. We have a couple of my flashers going off here and such. As far as toys, I have 10 solenoids. You got the two flippers, the two slingshots, and then the six, three in the back, three in the middle. So 10 solenoids all together. I have a port for strobes. I have a port for the beacons. And um, there's three ports for the RGB flashers. So RGB flashers do need three ports. And again, I have all those linked into the same smart. With the math on it, I have one more open port in the same smart, and that is gonna go to the shaker motor if I ever decide to do it. Uh, basically, there's also three power supplies in it. You'll see later on in the video, 24 volts, 12 volts, five volts. 24 volts power on the solenoids. 12 volts really actually power on everything lighting. My automotive strobe, my automotive um, flashers, my beacons, and my LED underglow strip is a 12 volt. The only thing that's five volts that's powering out of five volts is either the LED blinky, it's the LED blinky, is being powered from the five volts, and my buttons for the actual arcade buttons and the launch ball is five volts. So that's really all the toys. I mean, everything is there. Again, I'll go in depth later on as far as explaining the flashers breakdown on it. As far as the Sane Smart, the stuff again that's connected to the Sane Smart are the solenoids, the strobes, the RGB flashers, that's three ports on the same smart itself, and the shaker motor and the beacons. That should be 16 ports that I just explained. Now the big thing that some of you might get confused with is as you can see, I have a bunch of strobes. I even have strobes underneath the cabinet. Um, it's just one port out of the same smart, and then it's branched out to each strobe along the table. Um, same thing goes for the RGB flashers. It's three ports coming out, and then it's branched out. So as far as RGB flasher, I have three automotive red and blue flashers up here, the strobes, and I'll show you a picture of what they look like. Um, R, G, B. So that's three separate inputs right here. As far as flashers here, I have R here, because I have R here. So I kind of want to give it the effect. You could see it in the beginning before I was starting to talk. There's a flasher going on here and a flasher here. And then right here, I have a B. Same thing at the bottom underglow of the cabinet. I have a red R here and a B over here underneath at the bottom of the cabinet pointing to the floor. Might sound like I'm going crazy and talking a lot, but again, I'll go in depth and help you guys figure out how you could build this. Now, the one big thing is that there is a PC here. We'll go into the PC later on. And basically, I have one power button right underneath the cabinet in the middle. When I'm done playing, I literally just press the button. So I'll show you real quick. It's one simple button press. I let the system turn off and I have basically three LED fans that are connected to the PC. Once I see the LED fans power off, which it did just now, you might see it in the back. I'm able to now unplug it. The 
the last little bit to let you guys know and the biggest deal and it's a big deal for everybody luckily the TV that I purchased the Samsung when I plug it in it automatically turns off so I can set the computer up to turn on with power but as you can see right now all the displays powered on with just the plug the TV was a big deal a lot of people always talk about it and as you can see the Samsung powered on without even having the PC on. That was a big deal. I was very excited when I bought it home and it powered on right when I gave power to it.